Assalamu alaikum everyone. Dr. Bilal Bhaiman, urology resident here. And uh, presenting a topic of our urology in SIUT. And my moderator is Dr. Shirin. And the topic of today's presentation is RPND, data peritone electron dissection. Before going into the detail of topic, I would like to explain regarding the embryological development of the STs. And the rest is usually the same during embryological development to the posterior abdominal wall, the lepidic tenil, the blood supply, that is in the higher up in the posterior abdominal wall. And the mass, when it involves the testes, it will involve the periotic lymph nodes, while uh, the mass which is uh, in the scrotum, it will involve superficial and lymph nodes. Now, the topic. After the presentation is the retroperitoneal, the intersection is mainly upon it that we will describe regarding its indication, regarding its contraindication, regarding its complications, surgical procedure, techniques, right? So, the RPLND is uh, the usually defined as when there's a packets of uh, masses and they in a little peritoneum. Usually this is a complex procedure that requires the multiple uh, that is the exp uh, expertise and surgeons and uh, require uh, the medical personnel and all other uh, vascular team because we have to also do other associated procedures uh, with it. So this, uh, this will be described in detail. And inshallah, we will uh, uh, just uh, try to uh, explain each and every point regarding this RPLND. And, uh, and uh, we'll uh, also dictate the diagrammatic and the pictorial uh, uh, presentation. And uh, we will uh, ultimately uh, try to the involved of our audiences to have uh, a good uh, question, answer session and interactive session. The venous drainage, it is in the posterior abdominal wall. So the tumor which will involve the testes, the definitely it will involve the periotic lymph nodes in the posterior abdominal wall. Now, what are the indications of the RPLND? The indications of the RPLND, it is clearly written that it's stage one non seminomatous germ cell tumor. Now, this is uh, uh, the RPLND. Uh, the RPLND, it is used in a primary treatment of the stage one and stage two tumors with a transformed teratoma and should be considered for the stage two tumors with teratoma predominance if CMA tumor markers are normal. What happens that uh, uh, whenever we perform uh, the RPLND, the histopathology, when it represents, uh, there are certain uh, outcomes of the histopathology. For example, when histopathology it comes to be fibrosis, that has got a good prognosis. When it comes to uh, teratoma, it has got an intermediate one. At uh, the light germ cell tumor, it has got a poor prognosis. So basically, it is the primary treatment of stage 1 is stage 2 tumor, that is with a transformed teratoma. And uh, uh, what uh, the contraindications of the RPLND, for example, if there is an abnormal level of semen tumor markers. Now, what does it indicate the abnormal level of semen tumor markers, the semen tumor markers after the RPLND? Even when we perform the RPLND, still there is a rise in the semen tumor markers. Why is there a rise in the semen tumor markers? Definitely, there are also other metastatic sites in the rate of peritoneum. If we dissect in uh, uh, this uh, rate of peritoneum mass, it's still the, uh, there will be no benefit because there are certain other sites such as the pulmonary metastasis, such as the liver metastasis, which will lead to the increase in the serial tumor markers, and uh, there will be no such benefit, and uh, there the prognosis will be poor. And the second contraindication is a pure seminoma. Why these are contraindications, and what we will do in these cases? Yes, Anyone madam. from audience? Yes. Anyone from audience? Seminoma and uh, the first contraindication, what can be done? 
yes proceed yes sir and the bulky rate of peritoneal lymph adenopathy is stage greater than 2b uh, that is uh, involvement of the greater than 2 3 uh, lymph nodes and uh, the comorbid conditions that uh, preclude the general anesthesia definitely the patient if he, if he will not be fit for the general anesthesia it is a contraindicated for the rpl and t because it is it takes a longer time to be operated and uh, it takes it can take the life of the patient now the types of rpl and t number one is a primary rpl and t in the primary rpl and t that is that is for the high risk clinical stage 1 and low volume clinical stage 2 non seminal jumps of tumors with normal tumor markers that means we are uh, preparing the patient as uh, and we are uh, uh, performing the surgery without the use of the chemotherapy that is a primary rpl and t and uh, the second is post chemotherapy rpl and t if you induce the chemotherapy and uh, if there is a residual mass greater than 1 cm and the serum uh, tumor markers note this point that uh, the serum tumor markers in the post chemotherapy in the post uh, rpl and t they are normal and then uh, that's why we are performing uh, the post chemotherapy rpl and t one another type of rpl and t such as the desperation rpl and t in which there is the rise in the serum tumor markers uh, despite uh, we have used the uh, uh, chemotherapy and uh, that is another type of rpl and t which we will discuss in the subsequent slide now the salvage post uh, chemotherapy rpl and t uh, that is uh, usually done after the induction and salvage chemotherapy and uh, fourth is a desperation rpl and t now whenever there is an uh, elevated serum tumor markers and we are performing the rpl and t such type of rpl and t is known as a desperation or post chemotherapy rpl and t now reoperative rpl and t that uh, we are for example initially we have performed the retoperitoneal lymph node dissection and that involves the expertise of the surgeon that involves the techniques that involves the exposure of the surgeon when the surgeon is got uh, when the surgeon is done the rpl and t to prevent the dissection and if still it is the incomplete dissection and greater than 10% of the tissue remaining in the retoperitoneum and it will require reoperative that means another time it it is to be operated but this will this will be the quite high risk case uh, that is uh, uh, in the uh, reoperative rpl and t so uh, it depends upon the expertise and the person who has got a, a skill uh, in, in the technique Uh, performed by him, and uh, other is a resection or the lat relapse. Now, what happens that uh, we have uh, uh, performed the RPL and D, uh, and the relapse time is greater than two years, and uh, from the uh, primary chemotherapy, and still there is a relapse of uh, this disease that is a uh, uh, retoperitoneal lymph nodes, um, uh, the mass. and uh, then we perform the resection of that mass and this is known as a resection of the lateral relapse now what are the prerequisites of uh, uh, the rpl and d now the ct scan within a 6 week of surgery and serum tumor markers that is within the 7 to 10 days and the preoperative ct chest should be performed in all patient with prior lung lesions definitely yes it's continue uh definitely that uh, uh, the metastatic uh, deposit uh, it can it can metastasize uh, that is to the lungs uh, that is to the mediastinal lymph nodes and uh, for the evaluation of the chest uh, when we perform the uh, cd chest and one more reason to do ct chest uh, is if the patient has received chemotherapy specifically bleomycin that led to pulmonary fibrosis in most of the cases so in that patient the expertise anesthesia team should be taken on board prior for induction prior to induction so that any complications can be prevented uh, beforehand yes madam definitely you're right uh, uh, the patient who receiving the bleomycin uh, he will go into the acute respiratory distress syndrome and acute respiratory distress syndrome and we have to keep the fio2 at the time of anesthesia at the lower level and uh, the we have to uh, keep uh, keep the minimizing uh, uh, these levels so that uh, the it cannot endanger the life of the patient and uh, that of the fluid fluid management yes definitely 
Yes. Yes. Uh, no. yes, very good. yes uh, because the uh, most RPL and D, there is a tachycardia, and the, usually the staff they will uh, they will understand that this tachycardia it is uh, because of the lower in output, and uh, they will uh, they will get the aggressive management, and that will uh, uh, keep the. Uh, uh, th uh, that will uh, bring the difficulty for the patient. Now, the uh, technique which we perform, uh, the open RPLND, the laparoscopic and robot assisted. And in this era of the minimal invasive and the modern uh, uh, surgery that uh, usually we have uh, got uh, uh, the surgeons, uh, the worldwide, uh, now the accepted uh, Phenomena are uh, the technique which we are using is mostly the laparoscopic and robotic, uh, but uh, uh, they are the surgeons are counting on the fingertips to perform these uh, laparoscopic or robot assisted. Now, uh, in the beginning, I told that uh, regarding the embryologic development, with the tasty descent, the the uh, lepharic drainage is to the posterior is to the posterior abdominal wall. And uh, while uh, one of the tumor that is the choriocarcinoma that spreads hemato uh, hematolog uh, hematologically, the right sided testicular tumor can metastasize to the left side of the peri uh, retroperitoneum, while the left side is the tumor that uh, do not spread to the right side. Why? Now, from both of the testes, right sided. Um, all of the lymphatic drainage from lower abdomen has to drain into the cisterna chyle. And cisterna chyle's position is in front of the vertebral column, just behind the medial crura of uh, diaphragm and just later to the aorta. It is anatomically in normal patients uh, present on slight left to the medial, median sagittal plane. So the right uh, the, from right side of testes and right side from lower abdomen and lumbar lymphatics it has to drain into the cisterna chyle from there it runs into the uh, thoracic duct and then the left subclavian vein so that's why it is the only explanation written in the books for right testicular tumor spread towards the left uh, retroperitoneal lymph nodes and all lymphatic drainage go from at the end from right to the left side Yes, the system of the recollection of uh, the body of the lymphatic that is located at the level of an L1 and an L2, and the lymphatic then ultimately into the system of Kylie and to the thoracic and into the thoracic duct and then ultimately in the subclavian in venous drainage. Now, uh, this is uh, these are the actually uh, 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 the, the templates that, that is uh, we are defining for the, the for the right sided as well as for the left sided and uh, the modified templates uh, that include uh, the the dissection which is uh, usually done nowadays that is superiorly it is an infrahaler in, in order to save the uh, guy from the complications such as the callus leakage such as a renal injury such as a pancreatic injury and when if uh, we are performing uh, that is uh, in the previous days, uh, definitely there were more and more complications now due to the advancement in the technology and uh, array of the scientific development. There is the, uh, the reduction of the complication. Now, in the uh, what is called uh, uh, the, uh, what is more important that uh, in the interiliac region, uh, definitely there is a, a nerve plexus uh, that is uh, going down, uh, sympathetic nerve trunk, and uh, uh, ultimately it will go into the hypocastic plexus and crossing. Uh, the cycle of a monetary and uh, this the damage to the fibers and uh, this will uh, result in the loss of uh, anterior ejaculation and uh, the anterior ejaculation it is mediated by the several uh, by the coordination of several mechanisms such as the contraction of the prostate and some of the and the ductus deferens of the west deferens and this will uh, uh, end the closure of the bladder neck and uh, uh, so due to the uh, these uh, modified templates we have uh, we are facing the less and less complications in the retroperitoneal lymph node dissection now these are this is the uh, these are the nerve trunks such as uh, such as the celiac plexus and aortic or renal plexus that is uh, uh, just beside the superior artery and uh, the 
by the hypogastric plexus. This is crossing the inferior mesentric artery. And uh, this hypogastric plexus that is from an L1, uh, that is from the L1 up to the L4. And uh, the damage will result in the loss of this ventricular ejaculation and infertility. So we have to take care of it, this uh, uh, RPLND and... Uh, okay, Bilal, can you please uh, uh, go back? Yes, Bilal. Go back. Yes. Go back. As we can see, there are uh, lots of uh, uh, nerve plexuses starting from celiac and terminating to pelvic visceral plexuses. And these plexuses are basically the uh, basically the collection of different nerves, gray rami, white rami, having some sympathetic fibers, some parasympathetic fibers. They involve uh, each and every organ of the body most of the times and sometimes also having uh, interrelated uh, communications. This is the reason why the pain on the one side is referred to the other side. Now, uh, when uh, RPLND is being done, the thing which should be taken into consideration is a nerve sparing. Now, this is a uh, the dotted area or the shaded area basically is the marking of how much the extent of RPLND should be uh, done or what should be the ideal boundaries of RPLND in case of both the right sided tumors as well as the left sided tumors. So, anyone from audience can please explain if possible. Noman. Can you please uh, define the template or boundaries? And these are the important boundaries to learn for your exam as well. The, on both of the sides, when you are doing right or uh, modified template, uh, this picture this picture is showing bilateral uh, lymphadenectomy from both sides. And I will explain it. This is the modified template for right or left testicular tumor uh, retropatron lymph node dissection. Mm -hmm. And on the picture labeled as C, it is right side. It started from just above the uh, uh, common ilic uh, common ilic artery, and then on the lateral side that is ureter, it is extent. And on the on the medial side, it extends up to the uh, in in front of aorta. From right side of lymphatics, there is a, um, another picture pictorial diagram which shows the lymph nodes presence in both area. Uh, the lymph node we named accordingly. And on the left side, uh, if you are doing only left uh, modified template dissection, on the left ureter is the limit of on lateral side. Inferiorly, the inferior mesenteric artery and the common ilic artery above border. And on superiorly, it is the renal hilum or renal vein. And on uh, medial side, it is the inter aorto cable lymph nodes. Mm -hmm. And and in this picture, and they, they this has shown uh, the few lymph nodes and the uh, uh, nerve supply of the retroperitoneum. There are uh, the major structure is thraco uh, thraco lumbar, which is a sympathetic trunk present on uh, inside the antivertebral fascia, uh, just behind the aorta and. Uh, on on both sides of the vertebral column and we have to save this plexus mm -hmm. and for the to save this plexus and to do the complete rplnd on left side or right side we have to sacrifice the lumbar veins also and uh, to, uh, the most important complication which happens in normal non nerve sparing rplnd is the sacrifice of uh, hypogastric plexus from hypogastric fle plexus the post ganglionic fibers they usually uh, innervates the bladder neck and uh, if this is sacrificed the patient will be having the retrograde ejaculation and urinary incontinence due to the loss of uh, control in the bladder neck most mostly uh, and the external sphincter this is some pictorial diagram which is showing the lymph node present in both sides this these lymph nodes are present just around the arterial supply of uh, of the retroperitoneum. From here, you can see this box is showing bilateral RPLND so on uh, by the two images control and mirror images, and this is showing the right uh, left sided modified template. Just uh, this is a common ilic uh, artery just above border of common ilic artery, and this small artery is this is inferior mesenteric artery, and this is a para aortic lymph nodes and these are the hilar lymph nodes which is the non, uh, normal drainage of the left testicular tumor and on the right side from right common ilic artery right ureter on the lateral side hilar or renal vein on the superior side and midly the inter aorto cable lymph nodes and on the left side we have more pictures from the then which is labeled that after the rplnd the picture should be this like by after uh, modified bilateral rplnd 
sympathetic trunk is running this these are the anterior lumbar uh, fascia which is present in front of the vertebra these are the sympathetic trunk this person has cleared the whole, all of the lymph nodes from the ivc in front of the aorta by saving sma uh, uh, superior mesenteric inferior mesenteric common ilic and the sympathetic trunk so this picture is a post uh, rplnd picture in nerve sparing rplnd there is another picture which is showing the image this is the right ureter this is the left ureter in 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 here we can we can easily identify that the lymphatic uh, sympathetic trunk is running here this is a whitish non nerve sparing rplnd so har cheez ki miraj hoti hai to hamare yahan surgery ki miraj hum 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 log to rplnd ko samajhte hain lekin ab robotic rplnd uh, minimally invasive jo chal rahi hai this is another pictorial diagram when you are removing the retro cable and inter aorta cable lymph nodes you have to lift the both major vessels the ivc and aorta so these are the vascular uh, retractors they they do not harm to the great major vessels they, they just aside it and you can remove the uh, anti uh, inter aorta cable and retro cable and retro aortic lymph nodes by saving the nerves to so, save yes ma continue uh, just this, this is a just preview we have seen rpl and is done here or uh, metastatectomies are done here in our institute which is the high volume center a midland laparotomy incision from the zephy sternum to the pubic symphysis is is made and for low stage disease the bowels are retracted inside the abdomen and uh, for the uh, right sided dissection you have to uh, uh, land in the retroperitoneal zone for the ma the marking on the retroperitoneal zone you identify the common ilic and you identify then ureter and you open the mesentery just cecal uh, uh, mesentery and lift the bowel towards the medial side and on right side if you, the major, major bulk of the disease or tumor is in the right side and you have to do the extensive uh, dissection and you will lift the line of told on the right side and enter the retroperitoneal space and you will cauterize the duodenum from right to left side and till the ligament of teeth which is the uh, supporting and having the important structures on the right side from the lumbar vertebra to the duodenal jejunal junction the limits of dissection of modified rplnd uh, procedure are renal hilum superiorly ureter laterally medial border of ivc from the level of hilum to the inferior mesenteric artery lateral border of lower aorta and common ilic artery to the level of its bifurcation this is encompassing the left paraaortic and inter the auto cable region on the right side as i have narrated before the renal hilum superiorly right ureter laterally lateral border of aorta between the level of renal hilum and the ima and the lateral border of common ilic artery to the level of its bifurcation this is again this is the uh, handmade pictures which is showing this this picture is showing left side and this one is showing right side and from here you can see that when you will mobilize this line of told the large bowel will descend and you will mobilize it to the medially inside the abdomen if you are doing bilateral alpnd you have to put the bowel on on the abdomen not inside the abdomen for right side you can or left side for small ma mass and modified template the bowel is dissected and put in uh, in inside the th uh, just beneath the rib cavity So uh, okay. so far, uh, what you have uh, seen is the uh, bound of the original template RPLND on both the sides. The ureter are placed laterally on medial side. Uh, either way, on the right or the left side, there are major vessels encountered. If we have to do the RPLND of the right side, that we will encounter the anteriorly the aorta. If we have to do the RPLND of the left sided masses, then anteriorly we will encounter the IVC. the upper aspect on both the side is the renal vessels or the renal hilum and the lower aspect is basically the anterior aspect of common iliac on both the sides so this is a original template there is basically a change a small change in lower aspect of a dissection in case of a modified template so it's very necessary to remember at least the basics or at least these four things in case of an exams or the surgery dr noman very well explained Anyone else would like to add something? Yes, Arsalan. 
for unveil it start from the sickle ileocecal junction and start from the you are talking for right side right right side yes and when we are talking about right side we start dissection from line of tall to up to the foramen of winslow uh, to the caudate lobe of the liver and the left side from line of tall to the uh, descending colon to towards the and one thing uh, for the uh, nerve sparing rplnd there is a technique called spin and roll technique and surgeon starts spins at 12 o'clock at the aorta and then he descend cordially towards the uh, to see the ima for these uh, um, and and these uh, uh, for the preservation of lumbar for the anti grade injection to preserve it very good anyone else would like to add something question yes please dr chair um for rplnd if uh, we are talking about the start of rplnd that uh, start is from the silk tight uh, vessel for, uh, when we are doing radical archaeotomy we tie the vessels of uh, testes at the deep inguinal ring with silk and this is uh, the reason we tie it with silk so that whenever we go for rplnd in future we should start uh, lymph node dissection from that area and go dog like pattern uh, upward and dog like pattern is uh, acceptable rplnd and the other rplnd which is um, otherwise not acceptable is just a lumpectomy when there is a mass uh, residual mass after chemotherapy so if we are talking about the standard the standard is start rplnd from that silk thread and go upward uh, towards the upper limit anyone else no yes no complications uh, the complications of the rplnd number one is the lymphatic leakage now what will happen that uh, whenever we perform the rplnd we tie, tie these uh, the lymphatic so that uh, the leakage of the lymph, lymph it will be minimum and what will happen that whenever there is a uh, lymphatic leakage uh, uh, within the, within the abdomen and uh, this uh, it will increase uh, the gut and uh, the heaviness and and the and the uh, so nausea in the in the patient and uh, then uh, sometimes it will become infected so uh, either we uh, place a drain or uh, in uh, some times whenever there is an uh, chyle that is the uh, lipid that is a fatty rich uh, lipidic and um, whenever there is a leakage we will also prescribe and give the noctuidride that will uh, decrease the secretions especially from in hepatopancreatic regions and uh, uh, then rplnd definitely the, the we encounter the major vessels and uh, that will uh, lead to the bleeding uh, within within the er uh, area of an rplnd and uh, if uh, we go as uh, uh, dr noman has explained regarding the modified uh, templates that if we are going uh, that is above this the, the boundaries of these uh, but if i templates we will injure the bowel and the duodenum and this duodenum it will result in the fistula between the duodenum and the aorta and there will be also injury to the pancreas and uh, resulting uh, uh, in the uh, solid or injury and another uh, the complication that uh, we were explaining uh, previously like uh, the nerve injury the plexus injury that will uh, lead to the retrograde ejaculation mm -hmm. and uh, the the mechanism i told that involves the contraction of the prostate is some vesicle in the tectus stephron and contraction of the bladder neck and that will prevent the retrograde ejaculation and what will happen if there is a nerve injury definitely there will be the retrograde ejaculation and chylecystitis the in the chylecystitis the uh, we also give the uh, that is the we give the low fat diet we give the high protein diet and we also sometimes uh, give uh, that is very well explained in the campbell that we give the octetrite in order to decrease the secretions and uh, uh, another complication that is a renovascular injury in uh, the the uh, vascular injury definitely it will be evident uh, and the small bowel obstruction the patient uh, due to the uh, uh, the surgery uh, that is done uh, uh, 
that will take a longer time and uh, there are chances that the patient may go into the paralytic alias that is uh, post-operatively and uh, the patient will have uh, semal bowel obstruction so what we do that we uh, do decompress the bowel by performing by passing the ng in order to prevent the semal bowel obstruction and uh, another is the spinal cord ischemia that uh, that complication is less in one percent and the wound infection in uti and ileus and it, uh, and even the pulmonary complications as we described uh, regarding uh, uh, regarding the if you are uh, uh, giving the uh, biliomycin in the case of this uh, we will have uh, the acute respiratory distress syndrome so the in order to uh, prevent these complications uh, we we need the uh, great expertise uh, so that uh, uh, there will be minimum harm and danger and uh, the complications uh, that we encounter. Now, yes, Arsana. Yes, very good. Yes. Patient early mobilization and uh, low weight molecular heparin should be started. Yes. Yes. Now, there is a thing known as auxiliary procedures, which can sometimes be done in relation to RPLND. For example, in 8 to 31 percent of the patients, sometimes the nephrectomy can be done along with RPLND, and specifically in those patients in which retroperitoneal tumor mass is mostly greater than 10 centimeter, or uh, there is a teratoma, there is a viable tumor. These are the indications, or sometimes it's grossly merged with the tumor that nephrectomy can be done in auxiliary surgery sometimes uh, the injury of aorta and ivc can also be done which should be repaired if the diameter is less than 25 percent but if greater than 25 percent then sometimes a patch can also be placed which can be polytetrafluoroethylene or the decron graft similarly the chylus ascites is also one of the uh, indication and is a damage and auxiliary procedures like lymphangiogram lymphangiosyncytography embolization can be performed so if the retroperitoneal lymph node dissection is done, so a need of auxiliary procedure has to be counseled to the patient preoperatively as well. Okay. Yes, move ahead. Now the these are the uh, this is the dissection and this is RPLND that is uh, done in an SIUT. Uh, by it was performed by the Dr. Bilal and uh, the the very well written and the the boundaries that the this is the inferior mesenteric artery now inferiorly and superiorly the hilum and laterally the ureter and for the left side and right sided as we define uh, regarding that in the templates this is basically a video that has been taken from internet in which uh, the our surgeon has done the retroperitoneal lymph node dissection and a clear catch uh, specimen, uh, a clear catch uh, video of uh, the vessels can be appreciated. And this was done robotically. Upon completion of dissection, the aorta appears completely skeletonized with the right and left renal arteries dissected. The left renal vein appears crossing the aorta with the insertion of the gonadal vein into it. The right ureter appears as the lateral margin of dissection with the psoas muscle dissected. The aorta appears completely dissected off the abdominal wall. The interaortocable cable space appears completely dissected and the anterior spinous ligaments are apparent. The distal limit of dissection appears with both common iliac arteries skeletonized. The right psoas major and minor appear as well as the right ureter as the lateral. Upon completion of dissection, both common iliac arteries skeletonized. Now these are the EAU guidelines on the uh, testicular tumor uh, cancer and man management. Uh, 
रिगार्डिंग द डिजीज मैनेजमेंट प्लाटिंग दैट इज बेस्ड कीमोथेरापी टू बताए टेस्टिकुलर कैंसर इज एक्सक्लूसिवली सेंसिटिव एंड डेफिनेटली वी नो दैट द टेस्टिकुलर कैंसर द ट्यूमर दैट इज मोर कीमो सेंसिटिव दैट इज गॉट द हाईएस्ट रिस्पांस एंड in combination combination with surgery and radiotherapy that has resulted in higher cure rates with the disease and uh, the uh, regarding the uh, germ cell neoplasia in situ if the contralateral testes is normal and the management options like orchiectomy or close observation or the yearly risk of developing uh, that is the uh, 50% and in the patient with a solitary testes uh, local radiotherapy 18 to 20 gare in the fraction of uh, the uh, two gare should be considered what happens that if the uh, patient has got only uh, one and a single testes and if you want to preserve the fertility the polar fraction of this testes should be performed in order to save the fertility rather than removing the testes in block and performing the radical orchidectomy we have to uh, save this uh, uh, save the fert in order to save the fertility we we perform the partial orchidectomy and in the seminoma the germ cell tumor clinical state approximately 15% of the patient have got the subclinical metastatic disease usually in the rate of peritoneum and release of orchidectomy alone adjuvant treatment decision should be based on thorough discussions with the patient incorporating the potential advantages and disadvantages as well as the individual patient circumstances now in the case of non seminomata germ cell tumors clinical stage and management options include the surveillance adjuvant chemotherapy and retrieval for dissection overall approximately 70% are cured with orchiectomy alone and those with a higher risk feature of the lymphovascular invasion there's occurs in 50% and 15% with those without uh, uh, that is the uh, lymphovascular um, uh, with the invasion now in the in the case of uh, uh, whatever we defined indications uh, in the previous slides in the beginning that was uh rpl did perform in the case of the non seminomatous uh, germ cell tumors and uh, the regarding the metastatic germ cell tumor the first line treatment of the metastatic germ cell tumors the histology of all primary tumors and prognostic groups and cm tumor markers uh, during the first cycle of the chemotherapy in the poor prognosis and uh, regarding the seminoma uh, that is the clinical stage 2a and 2b and regarding the uh, metastatic disease that is uh, 2c and 3 in case of life threatening disseminated disease the chemotherapy should commence immediately particularly when the clinical picture supports uh, the uh, torchectomy can be uh, delayed until cl uh, clinical stabilization of the occurs and subsequently be performed in combination with a resection of the residual lesions and when uh, Uh, whenever we perform for example uh, we we are performing the rpl and d uh, and uh, the R, uh, the primary rpl and d uh, and post uh, chemotherapy uh, we are giving the chemotherapy and uh, if there is, is still uh, remaining of the residual tissue or if uh, if if there is an is still rise in achievement to markers or if there is international germ cell consensus group if it is uh, poor and the pro the prognosis will be poor the patient will be uh, labeled at a high risk mm -hmm. right and so that uh, the uh, it will uh, affect the prognosis and uh, if uh, after the chemotherapy we are uh, performing the uh in the post chemotherapy rpl and d we will we will usually uh, look the the factors and the outcomes of uh, and the and the uh, rpl and d affecting the prognosis uh, for example if it uh, turns out to be the viable germ cell tumor and uh, definitely that has uh, uh, got the uh, bad prognosis uh, bad prognosis if it is in a higher number while the teratoma or the the fibrosis uh, no only surveillance it will be required and no further intervention it will be needed it, it turns out to, uh, to be the fibrosis in histopathology pathology after the uh, this uh, rpl and d and uh, in the uh, in the uh, uh, so, uh, so, uh, solitary test is if you are performing this polar resection and we are giving the uh, uh, we we give after this uh, uh, surgery the radiotherapy in the ratio of 20 to 20 gyre and this uh, uh, this uh, radiotherapy it 
affect it can affect uh, obviously the uh, testicular uh, uh, f- uh, the function and uh, even spermatogenesis but uh, we in order to preserve the fertility we have to we have to take the risk and uh, uh, and this will uh, th- these are the certain uh, uh, exceptions in which we perform uh, uh, that uh, uh, partial one so thank you